Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Helena. So today is actually a sit down video and it's basically just tips for people who are starting their clinical year or currently in their clinical year. Basically tips on how to survive it. These are things I've learned. So if you feel like this video is useful for you, stay tuned keep on watching. If you know someone that's about to start the clinical year or currently in the clinical year, send them this video. <laughs> anyway, so I'll get straight into the video. Pre-clinical year is basically year one and year two at BART. Well, if you're on the five-year program, it's year one and year two. During this year, you will learn the basic knowledge, the basic science, and you have a combination of lectures. You'd have PBL, anatomy, physiology, clinical skills, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And also, you have MedSoc or Medicine and Society, and this is basically placement. So this is a summary of how preclinical works at BART. In terms of clinical, this is different. You become more independent and you are basically on the wards the whole time. But clinical year is more hands-on, more practical. You'd be on the wards, you'd be talking to patients, you'd be clerking patients, taking histories, doing clinical examinations. But pre-clinical year is year one and two, like I said, and clinical year is from year three, four, and five. Uh, during my clinical year so far, I go to the wards. So I'll be assigned to a hospital or I could be assigned to a GP. I would have a logbook that I would have to you know, complete different um, tasks. And part of this includes taking clinical history, medical history, doing um, clinical examinations, so different clinical examinations. And it also required, you know, certain things to be signed off. I'll be assigned to different placement according to my modules that I'm currently doing. Yeah, so pre-clinical, clinical, I think I've summed that up briefly. Now here are some tips on how to survive clinical year. So my first tip will be be open-minded and be willing to explore and try new things because the transition from second year to third year is quite different. So you're used to, you know, just attending lectures or your like clinical skills, anatomy, physiology. And now you're just basically fully on the ward seeing patients. Like there's a huge transition. Like you need to be open-minded, you know, know that you're going to be experiencing different things. Know that things might be unusual sometimes or things might, you might feel like you don't know what you're doing, but you need to be open-minded and interested. You need to be enthusiastic as well, like willing to learn. And if you're that kind of person, it's good because it shows the doctors or whoever you're assigned with. It just shows them that you're willing to learn. Next tip is try and be proactive. So especially on placement, I've had moments where sometimes I feel a bit invisible. I feel like maybe no one's noticing me. I feel like everywhere is just busy the different walls are busy or the doctors are busy and i just feel like wait do, do they know i'm actually assigned to them like you feel like they've forgotten about you because sometimes it can get a bit hectic for them but in moments like that you can still be proactive what i've learned to do is ways that i can be helpful to them if they need help with you know writing down notes or if they need help with just doing anything, could be like printing out something, just try and pre be like proactive. So it doesn't seem like you're just there, like just there doing nothing. To be fair, it's not all cases where you can actually have the chance to do this, but sometimes it could just be a simple question. Asking the doctor, is there anything you would like me to do? Or do you want me to help you out with this? Obviously you have to do things within your competency. Don't try and do the most, you know what I mean? Yeah. Also as well, it's useful if you have, you know, set tasks for the day. And I find this helpful. So for example, if you know you want to um, practice taking bloods today, or if you want to do a clinical examination, if you want to take a history today, you know, it's, it's good to set a task before placement. And this just means you're actually using your time wisely and you're actually helping yourself to be honest. So. For me personally, I actually like setting tasks for myself for the day or for the week. You know, just something that I want to achieve or something I want to complete that week. So I would just say that's another way of, you know, making use of your time at placement. 
because it can be very long sometimes you could have you know the lucky days where it's very short and you can have those days where it's very long or those days where you don't feel like it is that productive or you, you feel like maybe you're not learning as much then it's very good to you know have a plan you know what you like to learn what you could do today oh my gosh take histories like practice taking history practice clerk and patience this is so helpful because at first when i first started doing full-on histories it felt like it was quite difficult to like maintain a conversation with the patients but then after a while when you you know start you know clerking a few patients you know you get into the rhythm of it and also you become more natural you don't feel like robotic about it when you're asking set questions the way you think about differential diagnosis as you're asking questions becomes different it's almost like you mentally arrange the different information you're getting in your head sort of thing or jotting them down so i'll say definitely take histories i feel like people downplay history taking skills and remember from history from like you know patient history you can get so much information from that and it can be so helpful in terms of like diagnosis for the patient or like treatment wise management wise definitely practice taking a lot of history not even just taking histories maybe even getting some reviews back so you can get for example your placement partner to give you a feedback or, or what you did well you can watch other people take histories as well you can learn from them so if you have the chance to do clinical examination on the ward definitely 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 try it if you're not comfortable with you know doing certain examination just ask ask a doctor ask someone who's competent and help you out no harm in ask, asking because at the end of the day these are things you need to know and also in the long run it will help you in terms of examinations so for example your oskis and obviously later on in life as well so definitely don't feel afraid to ask another thing i like to do is reflect so i do a little mini reflection think about what went well what didn't go so well for example if i'm taking a clinical history or if it's an examination that i'm doing for example if i'm on renal medicine i would do a reflection to see you know how did i actually find it what am i struggling with what do i need to work on i feel like having reflections actually help you kind of narrow down, you know, what you're really good at and what you're not so good at. Also, this gives you enough time to improve on it. You can reflect in different ways. Some people like to write things out. Another thing I will say is having, you know, the right equipment with you. So, for example, having a notepad and a pen for you to jot down, you know, information. And usually, um, for example, if I learned something new, I would jot it down on my notepad and this is just a way for me to like remember certain things also so when i get home i can read up on it later on and you know other things that you should remember to bring is like your stethoscope i know some people feel sometimes uncomfortable putting their stethoscope around their neck because they feel like oh they're not a doctor or something like that but bring a stethoscope with you for example if you're in cardiology or respiratory um rotation and you have no stethoscope it's just like <laughs> so yeah bring your stethoscope with you so i tend to always bring my stethoscope just in case sometimes i'll bring my oxford clinical handbook with me depending on you know how i feel but just make sure you have a pen at least and you know a notepad just something to jot things down stethoscope and uh, anything else that you know will be you know useful for you during ward round the reason why i bring sometimes my oxford clinical handbook is if there's those moments during ward rounds where I feel like there's not much going on, at least I read up on something. Another thing is, if you have the chance to shadow another healthcare professional, by all means, try it. Definitely good experience. Because remember, even working as a doctor, you're going to be working with a big multidisciplinary team. Definitely helpful to get used to working with, you know, the different team. And the nurses are very helpful. You find out a lot from them. You know, they give, you know, personal care to the patients you find that hcas how you know they're very helpful as well you find out that doctors work alongside dietitians pharmacists so many other people as well that you could actually you know shadow if you can so for example i shadowed a phlebotomist for a bit and personally this was helpful for me in terms of blood taking and just to get a better understanding on so when you're on placement you'll be assigned to a consultant and you find out that the consultant will have his own team. So there'll be like a foundation year doctor. So it could be foundation year one or two doctor, a senior house officer or a registrar. What I found very helpful is speaking to the foundation year doctors because 
they are they tend to understand maybe you more because I guess they've just, you know, recently finished med school. So they can relate to how you might be feeling. And they were once in your shoes, like not too long ago. You find that that uh, most people enjoy talking or being assigned with a foundation year doctor because they tend to be more patient and, um, and they're very willing to help you with like certain skills that you might want to perfect or give you feedback on certain histories. It's it's good for you to talk with the foundation year doctor to be fair any doctor really but um you'll find out that most people tend to find it easier talking to the foundation year doctor so if you find a foundation year doctor that you know that's very nice and very helpful make sure you ask you know all the questions you want to ask you know don't be afraid to ask questions even your consultant as well but you remember that you're at placement to learn. So this is the best time for you to ask the questions that you know you want to ask and they're there to help you as well. So the last tip that I'll say is look after yourself. Make sure you look after yourself because can't lie, sometimes going into placement, balancing other things, balancing studying, revision, everything can be overwhelming sometimes. In the midst of all that, you still have to look after yourself. And by looking after yourself, it could be one time get back from placement sometimes you might just need a break maybe you just need to rest for a little bit try not to overwork yourself to the point that you burn out and i know like it can get hectic sometimes so you fall into the trap of you know overworking yourself why i'm saying this because i've even had moments where i had to take breaks as well i mean breaks for like studies so i'll come back home from placement and because i'm mentally drained i don't have that energy to just study so sometimes you just need to the fact that you need a break <laughs> so yeah and it's okay to take breaks i think some people feel like oh, they can't take breaks it's actually okay to take breaks obviously you have to be reasonable with your breaks and you need to be very good in terms of your timing and organization as well so you don't fall behind but sometimes you know take breaks <laughs> so yeah so basically these are my tips I hope it was actually you know helpful hopefully it can help at least you know one or two people even more and if you find these tips helpful please let me know if you have any other tips i'm sure there's a lot more tips i could have actually you know said in this video so if you're in your clinical year and you have more advice for students please leave it in the comment section below and yeah so this is the end of my video guys you know thank you guys for watching don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.